or YouTube, be ready to worship with me.
bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast to the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. It's good to see each and every one of you this morning. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. I know y'all heard it many times, but we ought to rejoice and be glad in it because you know what? I'm blessed. I'm blessed and I'm living in the overflow. Isn't that good news? Amen. Despite of what's going on outside, we are living in the overflow because God has promised us something. And how many people are looking for his promise? 
Oh, I can't hear nobody. If you're looking for his promise, why don't you get, get your hands up in the air and say, God, I'm looking for that promise that you promised me, that you promised Israel, God. I'm looking for it. I'm ready for a miracle. I'm living in this overflow, God, in the name of Jesus. Well, welcome to the new church. Wherever he experiences what? Where we love God, we connect with each other and serve communities. On behalf of Pastor A. Yes, McCaw Sr. and the entire New Church family, welcome to another edition of the Weekend Worship. To all of you watching me via live, wherever you are, we say good morning to each and every one of you. And if you're watching for the very first time, do me a favor and type Virtual V to that number that's about to appear on your screen. Once again, Virtual V to the number that's about to appear on your screen. To all of those visitors in the room, just get your hands up in the air. And our greeters have a card that they ask you to fill out and return by the end of the service. To each and every one of you in the room, we love you. I hope you love somebody. Do me a favor, get out of those seats, go hug somebody. Tell them I love you, there's nothing you can do about it. And if you're watching me out there, do me a favor and type a positive comment in that section below. You never know when somebody needs to hear a special word coming from you. God bless you and enjoy the rest of our service.
your last time may be as long as I am free I will always worship you keep it right there for a second
this place, give me all you got. Come on, every hand lift in this place. Every head bow, every hand lifted. And right where you are, I want you to give God 30 seconds of a personal praise, unprompted. Come on, come on, right there. Come on, come on, unprompted. Worship you as long I feel you. I feel your Holy Ghost. I feel your Holy Ghost. I feel your Holy Ghost. I follow your Holy Ghost as long as. Come on, you better go for broke. God is here. You better go for broke. You better go for broke. God is here. God is here. God is here. Shut me up. Devil, you won't shut me up. Shut me up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. We'll always work. Come on, everybody, work right where you are. Right where you are. Worship you. Right where you are. Come on. Come on. Let your worship be louder than the music. Let your worship be louder than the music. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men and women what God is going to do concerning us. God, forgive me for my sins now. Everything that I've done that's not like you. Lord, forgive me, God, that I may be able to preach in a way that's conducive to your favor and your power. Hide me behind the cross of Calvary. Men and women, boys and girls may not see me, but see the Christ within me. And God, whatever you're doing in this seat, hey, oh my shata, whatever you do, hey, boy, I yada bose, whatever, hey, go by shata, and I bose, did it by sayata, baha, eco bobo shata, yada bose, whatever you're doing in this seat, oh, I feel you now, God. Don't you do it without us. Oh, oh, I feel you, God. Whatever you're doing this season, God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the house of God. It won't always be like this. Oh, oh, my shata. The Lord will perfect that. Concerning you, Tammy, God told me to sing this for you. Sooner or later, it's gonna turn in your favor. 
He told me, tell you, he's turning around for you. Your appointment situation will be squared away within the next 30 days. You better bank on it. It will always be like. Did y'all come to have church or did y'all come to have church? The Lord will perfect that concern. told me to tell you Tammy that you're about to receive double compensation hey what about shot time I wish somebody a shout it won't always come on feel that's right like this let's take it back to old school the Lord will perfect that concern everybody if you know sooner or later sooner it's going to turn in my favor. Oh, my shut up. He's turning around for me. One more time. Everybody say it. It won't always. It won't always be like this. I feel your Holy Ghost. The Lord will perfect that. Turning around for me, around for me, around for me. Yes, sir, around. Around for me. Around for me. Around for me. One more time. It won't always. Everybody said. It won't always be like this. Your hand ought to be lifted. The Lord. I sense something in the Holy Spirit now. Hey, oh my. There's healing in this room. There's a healing angel in this room. You better get it. If you got anything wrong with your body, you're going to walk out of here healed today if you tap in. I need some folk who've been struggling medically. Come on, come on, come on. Tap in this space. God said my healing angel is here. God said there's seven testimonies that's coming out of this worship service that when you go back to the doctor oh my shot I need somebody to can believe when you go back to the doctor they're gonna give you a good report somebody look at your neighbor and say that's me good report good report it's turning around for me oh my shot I say it won't always be like this God bless this soul. She ministers out of her soul. Oh, So giving, so loving, so caring. Pours in week in, week out. Gives of herself in his ministry. Gives of herself in church. And God, I ask, Lord, that you restore unto her the joy of her salvation. That, God, you would give her triple for her trouble that as she walk with a smile inside, she's broken. Hey, oh my shot time. That as she sing with purpose inside, there's so much pain. But such a willing vessel. I speak over your life now. That not is turning around for you. God said it's already turned around for you. And that the rest of this year would be nothing but favor. That everything that you've been believing God for and praying, God said, I heard your daughter. But the trusting of your faith, the trying of your faith work in patience. And he said he had to let patience have his perfect work on you so that you may be complete and lacking nothing. And I speak nothing but the favor of God over your life. Watch what God do everywhere. The soul of your foot shall tread upon. It will be your territory. Somebody praise the Lord in this place. Always be like I feel you, God. Y'all gonna let me preach. Oh, my, my shot. The Lord will perfect that. Tell you, God said he ain't through with you. That he just began a good work. And that he gonna complete it until the day of redemption. I speak now boldness now. That when you walk in your
your space of employment, that you walk like a boss, that you would not be intimidated by anybody. He said he's called you to be the head and not the tail. He's called you to be the first and not the last. He's called you to be above and not below. And it is in your season right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Do me a favor, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you came needing, God is in the doing business. Say, whatever you need, God is in the doing business. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there's five seasons. Say, there's winter. Tell them there's spring. Tell them there's summer and there's fall. But say, neighbor, this next season is the fifth season that you just walked into. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's due season that you do for a breakthrough. Is there anybody in here who can say, I'm due to get what God has for me? I'm due, 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 I'm due. Exodus chapter 15, we're about to get there. I speak to your future. Because God said what's in your belly is your future. That not only you are prepared to bring life, but God said this is symbolism. That not only is a baby planted in your physical belly, but he said his favor has now been imputed in your spiritual belly. And I hear this Bible says that out of your belly, Hobasha, shall flow rivers of living water. And so I speak over you now that every area of confusion that shall try to enter your atmosphere, that God will give you the power and the ability to call it off assignment in the mighty name of Jesus. God said for the next 90 days, I don't want you listening to advice from people, but I want you to hear my voice clear and as concise as I want to prophesy to you. God said for the next 90 days, if you get in my face, I will make revelations new to you. Things that you've been trying to figure out over the last 10 years, it will become clear because I hear you in the spirit saying, God, I love you, but I need to understand my why. I need to understand why is it that I'm in this space? Why is it that folk around me seem to love me for a season but then disappoint me right when I start trusting in them. God said he gonna show you the purpose and he gonna show you your why. That your why will be made known. That revelation will be open unto you. That you will have the spiritual ability to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I need somebody up in this house to understand that God has not given us the spirit of fear but of love and of power and of a sound mind. told me to tell you because you made the spiritual in, spiritually intellectual decision to say I'm getting back into the house of worship God said that's all I've been waiting on God said I've been holding some stuff in lock and key until you have enough faith because you was raised in a church you was the first member of this church and God said because you got back on 
an assignment, watch I open up the windows of heaven. And I'm going to pour you out of abundance. This ain't uncle talking. This is the Lord. I'm going to pour you out of abundance of blessings that your mama won't have room enough to receive. That your daddy won't have room enough to receive. That your brother won't have room enough to receive. Watch what God does for you. He said everything that you went through, you went through it with a purpose and you were smiling when nobody knew your pain. You were smiling when nobody knew your hurt. Watch what God does for you. Turn it around for me. Be seated if you can. Turn it around for me. Y'all gonna make me sweat out my good suit. I called myself trying to look cute today. Y'all gonna make me sweat out my good suit. But that's all right as long as somebody get the glory. That's all right if somebody get delivered. It ain't about clothes. It's about the anointing. For it is the anointing that destroys the yoke. And he said, come unto me, all ye who are laden and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. For my yoke is easy, and I'll make your burdens light. And the psalmist said it like this, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Come on, shout to the Lord in his house. Be seated if you can. Don't play with me. Don't give me four to five weeks of sabbatical and then let me miss another week. The Holy Ghost get to talking real good. Sometimes God has to pull you away so that you can hear from him. And as bad as sometimes I want to be here, God said every now and then you got to hear from me. And you can't hear from me when you are so attentive to the assignment. I have to show you the assignment in the spirit that when you walk, I can make manifest new because you've already heard and seen that which I was about to do. All I'm trying to say is I saw this day before this day actually happened. There's two things in his life that I'm clear about. Number one, that I am indeed a man of God. There was a season in my life where I used to question that because I didn't understand why would God choose somebody like me to do his work and God told me clearly it ain't about you but I chose you because of me because I knew that you would eventually have a yes and sometimes all God needs is a yes and then he can use you because there's other folk who may be more gifted but they don't have a yes look at your neighbor and say all you need is a yes There's the problem, too many people questioning God. When God said all I need in this season is a yes. Yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul, completely yes. My soul says yes. Exodus chapter 15. I need to work this thing. That clock is dwindling real mighty quickly. Look at your neighbor and say, I came to receive the word. Now I'm going to challenge you today. This word, I need you to prepare your heart because you have probably did most of your worship before the sermon because there are going to be some times in the sermon where you're going to have to reflect. But then I'm going to pull you back to where you need to be, all right? So we're going to create some tension. We're going to uh, mess with or tamper with your spiritual equilibrium. But then we're going to bring you back into fruition that what, that which God has spoken to me will be manifested unto thine. Exodus chapter 15, while you're getting it, let's talk about a couple things we got coming up this Tuesday. Bible study is back. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for that. Y'all ain't clapping loud enough. Don't do that. Amen. Last week, y'all clapped a little louder. Amen. I want everybody back in this room Tuesday at 7 o'clock. I promise you that this series, this teaching series that God give, gave me to give to you is going to be incredible. It will be no gimmicks. It will be no game. It will be just about 45 minutes of straight pedagogy. Look at your neighbor and say pedagogy. That's intentional 
didactic instructions. Look at your neighbor and say, whatever he said, I believe it. Hallelujah. So we only got five for the rest of this year. Amen. Although there are several weeks, so I'm going to ask you to screenshot those days. Be in the house on Tuesday night. Amen. Whatever you got to do. I know some of y'all say, oh, God, I don't want to come to church on a Tuesday night. If you press your way out, I promise you he's going to put something in you that's been more than you can ever imagine. Amen. Don't forget about our prayer team. Amen. Make sure we're filtering those announcements on the video, too. Our prayer team is praying. You have the prayer request number. Amen. You don't have to wait till Thursday. I want y'all to get in the habit of not need reminders. If you know that you need God to cover you from something, go ahead and submit a request on any day at any time. It's electronic. If it's one o'clock in the morning, God speak to your spirit. Go ahead and submit a request. We'll get it and they will pray for you. Amen. We want to get out the reminding business so much. Amen. We shouldn't have to remind you to pray. Amen. We shouldn't have to remind you of your request. If you need God to do anything for you, submit it. Amen. And they will pray for you. And then finally on the fourth Sunday this month, I'm so excited about Unity Sunday. Somebody shout hallelujah. Unity Sunday, we usually would do a family and friends day, amen, but that's a lot of fanfare and people will come, amen, and you won't see them again until you do family and friend day. God told me this season, this year, we need to build up the partners of this church, amen, and all year we've been doing that. We started out with Team TNC and I'm still there. I want every partner I got, if there are some partners here that you know that's not here, you got their information, tell them, make sure, amen, that they're here on Unity Sunday. Also, amen, as Elder McDaniel told you last week, we change the dress code. Amen. We weren't denim and the accent color of your choice. Amen. You can be as fly or as dry as you want to. Amen. Amen. You can dress it up. You can smunk it up. Or you can just put on some jeans and a black t-shirt. I don't care what you do. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to worry about getting the merchandise now. We're going to let you order that on your own timing, but not required because we don't want that to be an impediment. But if you have denim, denim is jean material. The type of denim I'm talking about. Amen. And I would prefer for it to be the blue variety. Amen. 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 Yeah. Exodus chapter 15. Layla, I need you to have your listening and watching eyes on because we're going to move through this thing. Amen. And we're going to do it well. Amen. How many love the Lord? Amen. Amen. If you love the Lord, put your hands together for God. I know you wore out in the spirit, but wake back up and I'm going to wear you out again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what's wrong with my water? Come on, say, neighbor, really, what's wrong with my water? Some of y'all said it, but you ain't look at your neighbor. This time I want you to act like you look at them. Look at them in their face and say, neighbor, what's wrong with my water? My brothers and sisters, dihydrogen monoxide contains two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. And its liquid state, it formalizes into a formula known as H2O. H2O is what we translate in human perspective, water. Did you know that the human composition consists of 80% water? And according to HenryFord.com, a lack of water potentially contributes to your body in a negative way. For example, a lack of water can cause extreme and unwarranted headaches. A lack of water can cause sluggish bowel movements and bowel functions. A lack of water can cause dull and unmoisturized and unlively skin. A lack of water can cause you to have extreme fatigue. A lack of water can cause your mouth to be unwarrantedly dry. And my brothers and sisters, yes, a lack of water can cause weight gain because water is the ultimate supplement that decreases your enticement to eat too much. Somebody say, get you some water in your body. The CDC, my brothers and sisters, strongly encourages a daily and proficient amount of water intake. 
because they suggest that it is the intake of water that help combat this disease called dehydration. Dehydration puts your body into an unwarranted function, my brothers and sisters, and can ultimately lead to kidney concerns. And for those who consume alcohol, you need to make sure that your alcohol content does not supersede your water intake. Somebody shout hallelujah. For it is suggested that you should consume at least three to one water to alcohol. And the reason why I'm saying it because I know I got a lot of drinking partners in my church. Somebody shout hallelujah. And so I want to help you that while you're drinking you won't get dehydrated until the Lord deliver you from being a drunkard. My brothers and sisters make sure that you take care of yourself. Look at your neighbor and say he's preaching already. It is suggested by medicalnewstoday.com get this now that a person can only function with going without water of any kind for approximately three days. I want to have balance here and say that if you add fruits and vegetables into your diet that that also contributes to your water intake. But if you are not eating well and you are not drinking well, your body will simply fail if you do not consume water in a three day span. My brothers and sisters, all I'm trying to say with this research is that we can conclude that we need water to survive. Look at your neighbor and say, we need water to survive. And to that end, my brothers and sisters, as we navigate through this thing called life, this journey called destiny, this road called righteousness, my brothers and sisters, what do we do when we need something to survive and it's seemingly not within reach? I'm going to say that again. What do we do when we need something to survive and it seemingly is not in reach? I'm going to say it third, third time for those who wrote the short bus to school. What do we do, my brothers and sisters, when we need something to survive and it is seemingly not within reach? I would contend that part of your frustration in this thing called life stems from the reality, get this now, Phil, that they have a water problem. Uh, you have a water problem. Now, my brothers and sisters, we have been dialoguing from a literal perspective, but let's shift now into the spirit. Let's shift now to suggest, my brothers and sisters, that some of us, in order to manifest our reality, we need to find our water. Look at your neighbor and say, where is your water? Where is that thing that you need from God to survive the storm? Where is that thing that you need from God to make your faith? faith not a declaration only but manifestation too where is that thing that you need in life that will turn you from being a borrower into a lender where is that thing my brothers and sisters that you need in life that will turn you from being depressed to a person that's walking in your destiny where is that thing that you need in life that will keep you from being miserable but help you find your moment where is that thing that you need in life that will eradicate the pain while catapulting you into your purpose. Where is that thing that you need in life that will lift the burdens and shift you into your blessings? Where is that thing that you need in life that will move you from experiencing the goriness of details in life into the greatness of God? Because I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that if you obtain your water, you will find yourself in places where no man can turn you around. If you obtain your water, you will find yourself in an atmosphere that you'll be laughing at your enemies because they won't understand your anointing. If you find your water, you wouldn't complain about the job, but you'll thank God that you got a job to go to. If you find your water, you will walk in the office tomorrow not like you a boss, but you are the boss. Not that you're the boss of the company, but you're the boss of your own life and you control your own destiny. If you find your water then you'll know your calling. If you find your water then you'll know your purpose. And the reason why some of y'all can't shout because you come in today and say pastor I don't know where my water is. 
hear what you're saying, man of God, and I hear you always preaching about purpose, and you're always trying to push me into something great, but after I leave church feeling good, then the devil shows up in my life, and when the devil shows up in my life, I tend to forget the word that you spoke over my life, and the reason why you forget the word that I spoke over your life, because you received the word, but you did not drink the water. Sometimes you got to eat the word, but you got to wash it down with water. Somebody shout hallelujah and say, why is your water? Yeah, the reason why the church ain't the church no more because they have lost their water. The reason why folks come into worship but not getting delivered anymore because they have lost their water. The reason why you can shout on Sunday and be something else on Monday is because you have lost your water. The reason why people are more concerned with theatrics than the Holy Spirit because they have lost their water. The reason why people complain because they are not well because you have lost your water. Because if you had your water, you'll know that he was wounded for our transgressions and that he was bruised for our iniquities and that the chastisement of our peace is upon him and by his stripes we're healed. If you had your water, you would know that all things work together for the good of them who love God and are called according to God's purpose. If you had your water, you would know that all things work together for the good of them who love God. If you had your water, you would know that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. If if you had your water, you'll know that my God shall supply all of my needs. If you had your water, you'll realize that everywhere the sole of your foot shall tread upon shall be your territory. Look at your neighbor and say, go get your water. Because the honest reality is that you can't survive without it. Somebody shout hallelujah. The honest reality is, is that you can't make it without. The honest reality is, is that you're going, you're not going far without, far without it. The honest reality is, is that you're not going to be able to do what God has called you to do without it. Look at your neighbor and say, where is your water? And so here in our text, my brothers and sisters, we have a group called the Israelites. Some of you all called them the children of Israel. It is theologically more appropriate to approximate the correct terminology on them. They are the Israelites. They are a journeying community. They are the forerunners of what we would know as our Christian faith because they was once endowed in something called Judaism. Somebody shout hallelujah. But it is when Jesus shows up on the scene in the flesh because he was already there in the spirit because the text says in John that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God so Jesus was here from the very beginning that's why I don't see Jesus only in the New Testament which starts in Acts not Matthew I don't only see Jesus in the synoptic gospels but I see Jesus in Genesis Exodus Leviticus Numbers Deuteronomy Joshua and Judges look at your neighbor and say don't preach some of the Bible preach the whole Bible I'm so sick of people talking about the Old Testament it's not relevant if it wasn't for the old there would be no new. Look at your neighbor and say sometimes you got to go back and grab something from old school to help you with your new school. New school is a post runner of what the old school was a forerunner of. And every now and then you got to reach back into your mama's anointing who knew how to get on her knees for about two hours when you couldn't pray for 30 seconds and mama just moaned and moaned and say touch my baby touch my daughter, touch this church. Look at your neighbor and say go get you some old And so here in the near ancient eastern text or the ancient near te nearest text that's found in Exodus, my brothers and sisters, we see the Israelites in need of some water. Can I help you about this thing called water? Perhaps there's three issues when it comes to water. Number one, maybe your water is in something, let's go Layla, called a drought. Somebody shout out hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, perhaps you're in a drought. Look at the text in verse 22. The text says that then Moses ordered the Israelites or Israel to set out from the Red Sea and they went into the wilderness of Shur. Then they went how many days? Three days in the wilderness and they did what? Found no water. 
hold up and hold up wait a minute let me put some Holy Ghost in it my brothers and sisters here this Israelite community was supposed to be free from horrific oppression all I'm trying to say is Pharaoh they have now supposedly conquered that which had been spoken over their life that they would be free from the hand of Egyptian oppression that they would walk in liberation the text metaphorically suggests that God parts something called the Red Sea in which they trail through it from a spiritual perspective that God has a way of opening up spaces that no man can close and here they are trailing and trailing from Egyptian oppression and the end result is sister Tanya that they found themselves in the wilderness hold up hold up God wait a minute hold up how are you going to move me from one hellish space to the next and so here they are in the wilderness and all they need in the wilderness at this time was water because water was going to help them survive. But the text says that they found no water. My brothers and sisters, today many of us are perhaps confused as we thought we were making the right decisions in life, all to find ourselves in a droughted space and place that screams the question, did you really? Mm -hmm. See, I'm very cautious this season in my life when people tell me that they made a move because they heard from God. Because how can you clearly hear from a God that you do not know? See, we throw these spiritual phrases around like it's a piece on a Monopoly board and like we're trying to get to Park Avenue, some of my Monopoly pairs. We, 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 we do that, but the honest reality is stop putting every decision on God because many of you all are making my God look bad because the moment it failed, now you act like you just had bad gas. No, God has a way of giving you revelation and then confirmation. When God gives you revelation, don't move until you get the confirmation because every now and then it's not God it's the enemy sounding like God because the enemy has spent time with God it can mask itself to sound like God if you don't know God and the problem is some of us have a deeper relationship with the devil than we do with our God after we got saved because we are in a spirit that we don't have no water and wherever there is no water there is the presence of the enemy that's why Jesus told Nicodemus, unless you be born again by water and the spirit, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Because there's something about water that even the son of God, oh, I feel like preaching Mama Johnson, that even the son of God with all of his glory and all of his power, Sister Catherine, still had to come through the sack of a woman and her water had to be broken that he may be born into his world. And if Jesus has to get his own dose of water when he's the creator of water, then what does make you have to have? You need some water. Somebody say, you better preach up in here, man. And so... And so Uncle Ronnie, they, they, they could not find water because there was a drought. See, some of you all don't understand that a drought is simply a dry place. It ain't that God don't love you, you're just in a dry place. Y'all miss this up in here. But here is the issue. Norman, God leads them from one place and puts them in another place to see can you trust me so you can get to your ultimate place sometimes there are pit stops between our blessings sometimes God will move you from one place and see can you handle the next place before he can elevate you because if you can move without complaining in the wilderness then he can make your life wonderful but if you keep complaining while you in the wilderness then you will be in a droughted place where you will not have no water look at your neighbor and say grow up so he can blow you up but this is what messed me up sister Donetta the text says that they could not find any water they could not what which implies or is implicit that they did some searching 
Oh, y'all miss this up in here. Man, I wish I had some people up in here, up in here. They didn't just sit in the wilderness in a droughted space talking about what they didn't have. They knew that they needed the essentials to survive, so they did their due diligence to go research and find the essentials. All I'm trying to say, my brothers and sisters, is their search was relevant but at the naked eye it did not yield any results and my brothers and sisters all I'm trying to say here is that many of us are frustrated we're frustrated because you've been trying but it seems like your trying has been in vain have I got a witness in here today is there anybody in the house who can say, Pastor, I have literally tried to apply the word to my life. Literally. But it seems like there's a disconnect between oration and application. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oration is when I hear the word. Application is when I apply that which I hear. And so my brothers and sisters, all I'm trying to say is, how can I take the word from my ears to my life and see it aligned in a way that the word is made manifest? Yeah. All right. Because the Bible say that we not only need to be hearers of the word, but we need to do, do, be doers of the word. But the text says, how can they hear unless they have a preacher? And how can one preach unless they be sent? Now you all are blessed enough to have a preacher who was sent by God. That means you're set up for elevation. That you're connected to a certain type of anointing that is not privy to everyone else. And so my brothers and sisters, God is trying to tell me through church, God trying to tell you through me that he's trying to push you into a position that you apply that which you heard and here's the application it ain't that God don't love me God is just testing me I was talking to a student the other day they said they don't like a teacher because the teacher give too many tests and I said how many tests did the teacher give you said the test the teacher gave us four tests in a three weeks plan I said, what kind of test was it? It was a similar test. I said, the reason why the teacher gave you a similar test, because you had not appropriately been identified as one who understood the lesson. And so the test is not going anywhere until you get a sufficient grade on it. So don't get tired, get smart. Y'all miss this up here. If you get smart enough to say, now, if I want to stop the test, then let me study so that I can get the lesson. And see, God is saying, some of you all just ain't smart enough. The reason why you in the circumstance, not because I don't love you, because you ain't got the lesson yet. And if I elevate your favor before I elevate your faith, then you will be nowhere. Because God is moving us into a season where our faith must marry our favor. Some of you all want favor, but you ain't got enough faith for the favor that you want. Look at your neighbor say, God bless me with favor and faith. Yeah, some of y'all just been flirting with favor, but you got to get deeply into faith because the text says that if you have faith as the grain of a mustard seed, that you can speak to that mountain and that mountain shall be thy removed. But the reason why your mountain is still there because you want favor over faith. God told them the Israelites that it's water here, but do you trust me although you can't find it? One of my favorite lyrics of a gospel song said I searched all over and I couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low and I couldn't find nobody. And that's when we're in the right position. Look, just keep on searching. And then a songwriter said, but there's nobody greater, greater than my God. In other words, my God is greater than my pain. My God is greater than my enemies. My God is greater than what I don't have. My God is greater than anything that comes against me. Look at your neighbor and say, you better be shouting right now because your God is great. Somebody shout out drought. Let's go later. The second problem with our water is that we experience disappointment. And so God has a way of shifting us through cycles that are deemed, Sister Brandy, to make us whole. You cannot know what whole mean if you've never been broken. 
the reason you can appreciate holistic favor because holistic favor is a product of that which you've been delivered from that has broken you that's why you can know the difference between brokenness and wholeness so that when God do make you whole you won't get too arrogant to think that it was by your own volition and your own doing because there is a thin line between brokenness and wholeness and God said if you shift into arrogance I'll push you back into brokenness but if you shift in power I'll push you back into wholeness look at your neighbor and say brokenness or wholeness you make the choice the text says in verse 23 the clock on the wall is about to say that's all the text says that when they came to Marah I like that word Marah that they could not drink the water hold up hold up at first they could not find water Auntie Debbie but now the text says because they kept searching ooh, that they found water but the text says this particular water the text says that they could not drink it what I need is in my face it's at arm's reach I see my breakthrough but I can't get it because the text says that it was bitter in other words they felt they found their place but they was bitterly disappointed y'all missed this up in here oh I wish I had a witness up in here isn't that how some of us are my brothers and sisters that just when you thought you did enough to get enough just when you thought you fasted long enough and prayed long enough and tied long enough and served long enough and worshiped long enough and went long enough and did all those things and you saw that stuff in your face and you said God here am I and God said here am I and he shows you your blessing but you can't get it enjoy it yet let me give you the cliff note version God is not a spiritual tease God shows you stuff because he wants you to have some stuff but you can't have it until it's tested how did they know it was bitter because the text would suggest or people would misappropriate the exegetical work of the text to suggest that God sent water to harm them. If it was going to harm them, they would not understand that it was bitter. The only reason they knew it was bitter, Brandy, in my estimation, is they tasted it. Because God has a way of allowing us to taste bitter stuff so that we can become better and God says you can't become better until you get rid of bitter y'all miss this up in here I'm so sick of bitter Christians bitter men bitter women all you doing is complaining about what you don't have I know I serve a God who's not looking for what I don't have but what I do have because my father is rich with houses and land and he have a cat on a thousand hills look at your neighbor and say stop being bitter you better become better I'm preaching because some of us have been disappointed, but your disappointment has been stemming from the reality that you won't become better because you're staying bitter. Don't let that person win that done you wrong by keeping you in a bitter space. You walking up in here like you upset. You can take that evil spirit up out of here. I didn't say you can take you, just that evil spirit. But I'm in a space and place in my life, feel where I can't hang around bitter people. They turn me off. I got to keep moving. I got to block your number. I got to block you off Facebook. I got to stop you from dropping in my DM because I'm in a season of my life where God got too much favor on me so I cannot be handicapped and clutched by your bitterness when I'm be trying to come better. I cannot. So move, move, get out the way if you gonna be bitter because when I move, you move just like that. And I'm moving to a place on a city where the light shall shine I'm moving to a place where God is calling me to better somebody ought to say better let me finish this thing somebody shout out drought somebody shout out disappointment 
I'm just trying to help you with your seasons to understand the water that you need to survive. It is not that God is not with you. God is testing you because God loves you. And so you may be in a season of drought. You may be in a season of disappointment. But what God is ultimately going to do is give you the third thing. Let's go, Layla. Direction. I told you I was going to bless you in the end. That's what I do. Look at the text. The text says, get this now. Um, the text says, and they begin to complain. One thing I will say, Sister Cat, that they had enough sense to not complain to God. See, this is the pain, Eric, of being a pastor. That I receive darts and fire that should not be attended for me. But because you ain't got enough boldness to go above me and talk to God, then you give them to me. And so you try to get back at me when you really should be consoled with God because the honest reality is I really have no authority and control over your life. That's why I don't want people to worship me because I will fail you if you worship me because the very core of me is human. And if you put more trust in me than you put in God, then you will become foolish when you hear about something I've done. That's why I can shout even though I've sinned before. That's why I can pray even though I messed up because I understand that the human state of me is like the prophet when he said, when I would do good, oh my God, evil is always present. So I ain't always right. I have not always dotted every I. I have not always crossed every T. But I have enough sense to know to get on my knees and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. Oh, I'm preaching better than y'all responded. The tag says that they start complaining to their leader. And Moses could have said, look here, Negroes. I didn't got y'all out of Egypt. I didn't got y'all through the Red Sea. I didn't got y'all out of Egyptian oppression. But Moses understood that he didn't get them through anything. He understood that he was a vessel. And that's why y'all never hear me naturally venting to you. I will never come to a partner for advice about a spiritual decision because God has put me in authority that I should not vent down. That's why I got to go to my leader and my mentor because I can't tell you everything because you ain't strong enough to handle everything. And that's why God has called you to come talk to me because God has assigned me with authority over your life. See, there's levels to this. And so when I'm going through, I don't talk to you about it. I talk to somebody else about it. Y'all miss up in here. Look what Moses said. The text says, they said, what are we going to drink now, dude? This water is bitter. I'm bitter. And the text says, Moses cried out to the Lord. In other words, they complaining, so I got to go to the king. And when he cried out to the Lord, that word cry out suggests an intense dialogue and intimate session with the authority one. In other words, it wasn't just, he said, Lord help. It was a ugly session. It was a, it was a sweated out your outfit session. It was a, a take your wig off session. Come on, shout hallelujah. It was to pull some of those Lee press ons back session. It was, yeah, yeah, you know how y'all do. It, it was take off your jewelry session. It was take off that beat off your face session. Yeah, yeah, because you can't be beat up for what God is trying to do. It was to take that Maybelline off. Hallelujah. And take that foundation off because God is about to get real and he want to see the ugliness of you because God created you so he know how ugly or how cute you are. And in my opinion, everybody got beauty in them. Somebody shout hallelujah. And so it's time to take all that stuff out. And he cried. And it was after he consulted with God that he got his direction. The text says, my brothers and sisters, that as his Moses' back was against the wall and the people were complaining, they were irritated, frustrated. He consults God and God shows him a piece of wood. 
Now don't 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 get brand new on me, because you may know the story. Because Phil, I would have had a problem with God. Now wait a minute, God. You you you. Wait a minute. Hold 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 up, God. I not trust you now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh. 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 But I already went through a Red Sea. I'm in the wilderness. We couldn't find no water. Water we found building. These Negroes complaining, ready to cut my throat. I done got ugly for you. And you got a nerve to show me a piece of wood. Come on, Doc. Wait a minute, God. Why and how can a piece of wood help me? In this situation, I need you to touch this wall. But God said, I ain't not gonna touch the water because I touched the wood. And whatever I touch, get this now, is will make everything new. The text says that He touched the wood. He gives it to Moses. Moses put in the water. Get this now, and the water became sweet. Uh-huh. The wood actually became a ancient Near Eastern water purification system. Something that Absher could not do. But get this now. I told you that Jesus was in Genesis and in Exodus. See, you don't understand. Perhaps the wood was a foreshadowing of what was going to happen in the gospel. Because the Bible says that Jesus was hung up, oh my shot out, on a tree that was a piece of wood. Y'all miss this up in here. And the Bible said that he had to carry that wood. The wood that had already been anointed in Exodus made manifest in the gospel. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, all you need is a piece of wood. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, say, oh, oh, neighbor, God is going to give you a piece of wood. Have I got a witness? I'm so glad that he gave me that wood because the Bible says that he died. Yeah, he died. I feel my Baptist anointing now. He died. Yes, he died. And they marched him from courtroom to courtroom. Yeah. And they put him on that wood. They put nails in his hand. They put him on that wood. They put nails in his feet. They put him on that wood. They pierced him in his side. They put him on that wood. But yeah, I got one more thing that I got to tell you. That when they pierced him in his side, the Bible says that blood came out. But scientific revelation says that blood cannot come out unless it be accompanied by water. Y'all miss it up in here. So not only on that cross and that wood did they have blood, but they had water. You remember, I asked you, what's wrong with my water? Jesus said, with your water because it came out of my body and all all you gotta do is grab your water look at your neighbor I said look at your neighbor and say neighbor come on you gotta look at him and say neighbor God is about to give you some unexpected water yeah say God is about to give you some supernatural water. God, yeah, God is about to give you some Holy Ghost water. Do me a favor as I take my seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And y'all know what else water produce. Water came out of the rock. Water but that's not how the story in three days he got up again and he looked up to heaven I said he looked up to heaven and when he looked up to heaven he saw me 
that I'm on my way. When he looked up to heaven, he saw you and you was on your way. When he looked up to heaven, he saw you and you was on the way. And I can hear God saying, not only do I see you coming up, but I see something coming down. What's coming down? your neighbor and say God rain on me rain on my money rain on my relationship rain on my mama rain on my job rain on my hope rain on my peace rain on my love rain on my heart cause this joy this joy that I have the wild the wild the wild Water. What's wrong with my water? If you're going to get some water that's sweet, you got to touch the Savior. Because the songwriter wrote a song that said, He's sweet, I know. Storm clouds and dark clouds may rise. But stormy winds may blow. But I'll tell the world, wherever I go, that I found a savior. And he's sweet, I know. Every hand lift in this place. Father God, we thank you for this word. We thank you that it's pressing season. We thank you for the wood. We thank you for the drought. We thank you for the disappointment. But ultimately, thank you for the direction. And the direction points toward the wood on Calvary's cross. Every head bowed, every close. Repeat these words to me, Lord. Touch my water in the most bitter of the spaces. Touch it now. Father God, we thank you. We bless your name. Every head bowed, every close. You watch me online. When this post, you're in this house. You don't know the Lord as your personal Savior. Nobody's looking at me. Every head bowed, we about to leave out of here with the next three minutes. Everybody repeat this word with me. Lord, whatever I've done. The ways of joy should be on the screen. Lord, whatever I've done. Forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart. And save me. I believe in your son Jesus. That he died on the cross. And he rose again. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep your head bowed. Keep your eyes closed. You're in the house today. You've never filled out a red card. You filled out a yellow one, but you didn't fill out a red one. I believe God is calling you to be a partner in this house today. I know you've been wondering, trying to wonder if this is the place God told me to tell you today is your day. Don't walk out of here without making that move. If you're watching me online, that word partner, text the number, text partner to that number. We'll get back with you about next steps. But if you're here today, every head bowed over close. Nobody's looking at you, but the greeting of myself. Don't you leave out here today without filling up that red card. Slip up your right hand and say, I'm going to make the new church my choice today. Slip up your right hand. Today is your day. Today is your day. And as you grab that card, you can begin to fill it out. You can have a seat and fill it out. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Church, I love you. I really do. I really do. I love you. And I'm loving you more and more as the season go by. I feel like this year number one, although it's year number 18, because life is good when you're having fun. I believe in God for some stuff over your life that you ain't even believing for. 
I'm praying for some stuff for the congregation of this church that God would literally unexpectedly blow your mind. And that you don't even know that some of the stuff that you're about to get is because of the interceding that we've been doing on your behalf. And God, I pray, God, that you would send vessels to this church. But God, we want the broken. We don't want the arrogant, but we'll take them. But we want some people who need to know you in a deeper way. I'm praying God going to use you to be evangelists. That we will fill this place up, not because we're trying to be mega, but because we serve a major God. I pray that your sisters and brothers and aunties and cousins will be saved. I pray that God will send you wives. I pray that God will send you husbands that know him, that save, that loves God more than they love anybody else so they can love you better. I pray that marriages will be restored. I pray that marriages will be birthed in this ministry and they will not depart and go anywhere else, but they'll come in this place and serve a couple's ministry. I pray that the singles would grow in anointing and favor and understand they're powerful even though they don't have a mate yet. I pray for kids coming. I pray for children's church. I pray for youth ministry. I pray for production style stuff. I speak it now. I pray that the sanctuary will be renewed, recovered and restored. And that in 2023 we'll find ourselves worshiping in there again. I pray God that every wall will be fixed. I pray God that every floor will be repaired. I pray God that every classroom will be restored. I pray God that you open up a college in this church that folk can come in here and get college accreditation. I pray for summer camps that people wouldn't have to go to the Y but they would come here. I pray God for curriculums being restored. I pray for the studio being built on a second floor that recording artists can come and get free studio time. I pray now that this year and moving into 2023 that this prophetic prayer will come to pass. I pray, I pray, I pray I pray for the feeding of the hungry. I pray for revitalization programs for those who are coming out of incarceration. I pray, God, for a house that folks who are victimized by human trafficking will come in private and be restored. I pray that we come against sex trafficking. I pray that we become a polling place, that we get righteous with politicians. I pray that Bible study would be in our purview, that folk would understand the purpose. I pray that they don't just have to hear me that the word of God can come through the other preachers I pray that you anoint their voice for a season and a time such as this I pray for growth spiritually numerically and financially and if you believe God with me open up your mouth and begin to praise him come on praise him put a praise on it put a hallelujah on it we go on high your tithes in your hand 10% whatever God bless you with $10 is a pastor love offering and we're going to sow ways to give look at your neighbor and say God bless you God bless me, God bless this church and God bless my pastor say let it rain come on come on say turn it around open the windows of heaven pour out a blessing Turn it.